Up until now, the Geraldine R. Dodge Poetry Festival was always held in a rural, out-of-the-way place. But this year, the largest poetry event in the country took place in New Jersey's largest city, Newark. The festival featured some of the world's best living poets. We caught up with a handful of them to talk about the festival and about poetry. Poets Laureate Rita Dove and Billy Collins, featured poet and Newark native Amiri Baraka, identical twin poets Michael and Matthew Dickman, and Newark poet Marjorie Barnes. I think they're amazing. I think they're just like this amazing gathering of tribes. I love that so many people come and just to appreciate something as ephemeral as poetry. It's wonderful. I'm glad something like this is here downtown Newark, um, very accessible. Uh, and I'm just trying to take in the whole energy, the whole environment. It's like being at poetry camp. You know, you get away from home and, and you just play with poetry. Well, this is actually a little bit of a tradition for us. Mm -hmm. This is our second time coming to the Dodge. I think it's a good thing for Newark and for poetry. <laughs> People are very used to the relatively woodsy setting of Waterloo Village and wondering how could this possibly transfer into downtown Newark, a, you know, an intensely urban setting. Um, those anxieties, for me anyway, were, were, were relieved about 10 minutes after I got here and got off the train station at Newark. You can't stop people from strolling. That's just going to happen wherever poetry is involved. So. And it is kind of an outdoor setting, uh, the one we're sitting in here with these birch trees, I guess. You know, Ginsburg spent some time here. Uh, William Carlos Williams spent time here and wrote about Patterson. And of course, there's Amiri Baraka, and he's probably the poet they associate most closely with Newark these days. I grew up here. My family came here in the 20s. I still meet people in this town that knew my parents, knew my grandparents. That's what home is, actually. All over the world. We're going to uh, begin this program with Amiri Baraka, who is 76 years old today. It is his birthday. It's a poem for this city that I was born and raised in, Newark, the brick city, the third oldest city in the country. We've always excelled in the arts. It's called In Town. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Something in the way of things. Something that will quit and won't start. Something you know but can't stand, can't know, but get along with. Like death riding on top of the car, peering through the windshield for his cue. Something entirely fictitious and true that creeps across your path Hallooing your evil ways like they were yourself, passing yourself, not smiling. The dead guy you saw me talking to is your boss. I tried to put a spell on him, but his spirit is illiterate. There are a lot of poetry events that go on here in Newark. So a lot of us here in Newark who are poets, we're pretty much used to having poetry events. We've just never had something as huge as this um, at the national level, something that's nationally recognized. So we're really excited about it. I want to read some poems that are um, a little bit more personal and... A lot of my poetry is about family and my life in Newark. Poems about my father, about my mother, my grandmother, and my siblings. And uh, most of what I write about is just our everyday experiences living in Newark. Every day is a struggle how to hustle some dough. If you was raised in a hood, well, then you already know. It be days, it be good, but mostly money be slow. Have you ever been hungry before? Every day is a struggle. How to hustle some days. All right. Yeah. Somebody is like. 
You guys have been listening to poetry all day, so you're either like the happiest you've ever been or you're quietly living in misery. <laughs> I don't know if anyone here was at uh, my talk earlier. Anybody? Two people? Great. Awesome. <laughs> That's right. I remember you were exactly only the four people who were there. For me, in my life, and I know for many others, people who don't even write poetry, poetry's been really uh, important to them when they've been in love, uh, when they've had some great grief or loss. Uh, so I think you know, the case for poetry is that it, it does actually live and exist in our, our lives. I mean, everything from like if you're reading Keats, suffering in a high school classroom, or you know, you're listening to uh, Jay-Z, you know, you're getting you're getting poetry in your life. I would I would agree. The case, like the case for poetry, I, I don't think a case has to be made. Although we make one all the time. You know, even with like funerals and weddings. You know, that's like the one time when everyone wants a poem uh, or wants you to come and read something. And uh, but the what that implies is that they need it to help them experience an important moment in their life. Mm -hmm. And if, if you can just take this small step past that and say, well, I also need this to help me experience my daily life, um, you'll be doing really well, <laughs> I think. Poetry has always been relevant, but never more relevant than today, because we have such a glut of information, information that doesn't feed the soul. What poetry does is give voice to the unsayable, it gives voice to the ineffable, the stuff that's inside of us, the stuff that we really can't get out, and so we just keep going, 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 going. What better reason to have poetry around that it, it keeps us human? Back when the earth was new and heaven just a whisper, back when the names of things hadn't had time to stick, back when the smallest breezes melted summer into autumn, when all the poplars quivered sweetly in rank and file. The world called, and I answered. We were at the Library of Congress just two nights ago, a seven poets laureate, which is a lot, and I mentioned to the Librarian of Congress, I said, if you need any light bulbs to be changed, we have seven poet laureates, we can, we can get on that. You know? Here's a little poem called Hangover. <laughs> and, um, if you don't know that, if you're not familiar with that experience, you can just call it really, really, really bad headache. Um, hangover. If I were crowned emperor this morning, every child who is playing Marco Polo in the swimming pool of this motel, <laughs> shouting the name Marco Polo back and forth, Marco Polo, Marco Polo, would be required to read a biography of Marco Polo. <laughs> a long one with fine print, as well as a history of China and of Venice, the birthplace of the venerated explorer, Marco Polo, Marco Polo, after which each child would be quizzed by me, then executed by drowning, <laughs> regardless how much they managed to retain about the glorious life and times of Marco Polo, the Dodge Festival is the biggest high, I think, for poets and readers alike. When you see these audiences listening to poetry, and it's about the poem, it's not about the poet, the individual poet and all this, it's really about the poem that we're all writing together. It's beautiful. Wait in the water, wait in the water, children, wait. In the water, God's gonna trouble the water. Wise one, if you ever find yourself somewhere lost and surrounded by enemies who won't let you speak in your own language, who destroy your statues and instruments, who ban your um boom ba boom you in trouble. The Himalayas are on the move, appearing and disappearing in the snow in the Himalayas. Mahler begins to fill the half-dead auditorium 
giant step by giant step. The Colorado, the snake, the salmon. The albino asparagus wrapped in damp paper towels, their tips like the spark of a match. The bunches of daisies, almost more a weed than a flower. The clementine, the sausage links, and chicken hung in the window facing the street where my heart is president of the Association for Random Desire. So when you see me sitting quietly with a bottle of pills in my hand, said when you see me sitting quietly with a bottle of pills in my hand, or my words cut you like razors, because you don't understand that I'm out here on the battlefield and there's no real end in sight, and I'm holding back these blues with all my might. I'm like those flying Africans. Let my soul take flight, because I've been holding back these blues with all my might.